I've been getting a persistent code on this on the check engine light for my daughter's E46. It's a 2004 325 CI. And um, what I get is a uh, bank one lean code and a bank two lean code, bank one, one through three cylinders, and uh, then four through six. And uh, so I went out and bought a smoke machine, and I'm going to uh, throw some smoke in there and, uh, and see in, in the vacuum system and see if I can find out where the leak is. So the smoke machine's on. I've, what I've done is connected it to this uh, vacuum port here on the upper valve cover, on, or the valve cover. Um, just by popping this off, you squeeze these two and you put the uh, smoke port right in there. Sometimes you'll get smoke coming out of here, but what I have, if you notice down there, is I've got smoke coming from down on the side. So it's hard to tell where it's coming from, so I'm going to take off this plastic piece and then we'll try to figure it out. Oh, yeah, I'm starting to see it come up from over here. Let me get a closer look at that. Yep, yeah. it's coming out from this number four spark plug right here. You can kind of see all the smoke coming out of there. So let's pop that off and see what's going on. There's a little electrical connection. You just pull this up and that comes off. And then you should be able to pull this up and off. Yep, look at all the smoke pouring out of there. <clears throat> now what this points to obviously is a bad valve cover gasket, so there's a gasket that runs on here. There's also a, a gasket piece that seals all of these spark plug holes. It looks like there might be some coming out of this number five as well, but needless to say, I'm gonna replace that. This is the number four spark plug well, and what you might expect, and as we do see, is some oil to be in there. Obviously, um, it's not a lot, and that's kind of to be expected. Uh, because this is under vacuum, this whole area underneath this valve cover is under vacuum when the engine's on, so um, it's pulling air in through the spark plug well into the cavity of the uh, valve cover. Now there's lots of videos on YouTube about how to replace the valve cover gasket on an E46, so uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on it, but suffice it to say, it's a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts around the outside. You've got to remove all the uh, spark plugs, or well, not the spark plugs, uh, but the coil packs. Each individual cylinder has its own coil pack. That was uh, what I just removed. And so you got to undo these electrical connections at the top, loosen up the wire loom, and then uh, another thing you got to do is re remove the area for the um, uh, cabin filter. Okay, so we got the valve cover back on. Um, got all the spark plugs changed out and the new coil, or the, not the new coils, but the coils back replaced. Um, put everything back together, torqued down all the bolts. Again, I'm not going to show you how to do the valve cover gasket. There's plenty of good videos out there on, the, on YouTube on how to do the valve cover gasket. Um, then I re-ran the smoke test through this port here and no smoke, not, not an ounce of smoke was coming out so that was good. Then I closed off that port, re-ran the smoke test through the main intake tube here just by taking off the MAF and then uh, putting uh, the smoke uh, nozzle in here and sealing this. and didn't see any smoke anywhere so I think all my vacuum problems are prob are gone so with those um, codes that I was getting from the check engine light as far as uh, system running lean usually it is a leak somewhere a vacuum leak um, so obviously mine's not that because I'm still getting the code um, so the next thing I'm going to diagnose it to is try to diagnose it to this uh, MAF sensor right here. 
Okay, so with my code scanner here, and um, you can use any code scanner that can read live data. So this is an Autel uh, MD806 uh, Pro, and it will read live data. And so the way they do that is you go into the OBD, OBD section, onboard diagnostics, um, and then you go down to not read codes, but live data. And so what you got to do is you got to have the car on. So I'm going to start it up. And then you can read the live data from either a uh, custom list or a complete list. I'm just going to custom list here. And I'm going to select several of these things. I'm going to check, uh, select the short-term fuel trim, long-term, short-term for bank two, long-term for bank two, engine RPM, and then uh, airflow rate from mass airflow sensor. Select. Now when I read these, it's going to show me what I'm getting. Uh, so right now, let's see, I'm getting, I just start on the car as a cold start, so it's, uh, not going to be, the numbers aren't going to be perfect, so I'm going to have to let it warm up, uh, to operating temperature before I can read this. But this math right here, you're looking for that bottom to be in the range four to five grams per second. And right now it's reading in the range, it's 4.17, 4.18. Um, as long as you can pick that out on the video and so what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna see what that reads once it's all warmed up as the car warms up this number uh, is dropping more and more so it's now 3.77 3.86 3.84 grams per second and um, yesterday I did it when the car was completely warm and it got all the way down to 3.2 grams per second and kind of hovered around 3.2 3.3 grams per second so that's what I'm assuming is the, the problem that I'm actually having other than the exhaust or the uh, vacuum leak that I did have that I fixed now I got a problem with my uh, mass airflow sensor and it's it's reading wrong I tried to clean it that didn't work with some uh, math sensor cleaner and so now I'm just going to change it out. It's it's um, between 40 and 50 bucks for a new one. And so I just uh, bought one and we're going to see uh, how that's going to work for me. And to change out the mass airflow sensor, you just have to remove the electrical connection right there. And then disconnect these two clips on the back. There's one on each side on there. Then one over here. Okay, then you just slide the new MAF into place, connect the two clips and the six millimeter band clamp here, connect the electrical connection, and you're all done. It's the easiest thing you can possibly do on this car. Okay, so I changed out the MAF sensor and the uh, car is all warmed up now. And uh, right now you can see that instead of like 3.2 or so grams per second, now I'm up at 4.13. It's been hovering between like 4.1 and 4.4 grams per second, which is good. That's in the good range. And also these short-term fuel trims up here, those will give you an indication of if you've kind of solved the problem as well. Because the long terms are still... Um, reading a positive number, positive 19, positive 18, but the short terms are all negative, negative 16, negative 18, so you can see the in the short term the engine's trying to reduce the amount of fuel going in, but the long term said, hey, over the long term um, we've had to add a lot of fuel to make up for this uh, problem that you were having with your math. So that to me tells me that eventually these long-term fuel trims will come back down probably closer to uh, zero. I think uh, between zero and 11 um, is they won't throw a code. So anything above 11-ish, um, it'll throw the code for uh, that uh, lean condition. So right now I'm thinking that um, that math definitely solved the problem based on the, the 
short-term fuel trim readings that I'm seeing, which are much more in the negative, and the uh, MAF reading, which is about a gram per second higher than that old MAF. And so uh, we'll obviously drive it around for a week or so, keep an eye on the check engine light, which we cleared out, and um, see if the check engine light comes back, and I'll let you know.